Hello and welcome to a video on embedded programming. Um, I am using the Basis MX3 board and um, I have this really stupid, simple little C program. Pause if you want to try to take a moment and figure out what this thing does. The idea of it is that we're going to essentially uh, wait for the one of the buttons to be pressed down um, and whenever it is, we'll add one to the count and then we'll essentially write a binary counter um, out to the LEDs on the MX3 board and then we'll wait for the, the button to come back up. Now, there's a lot of problems with this code. Like, I'm not trying to pawn this off as, as good code. And in fact, we're going to look at a bunch of the problems um, as we go through this example. Um, I want to take a moment and show you uh, this is the whole code, right? So this is pretty typical of stuff. I've, I've been teaching embedded programming for a long time now. This is almost exactly the kind of a file that my students try to pass off. Um, maybe there's a comment that's actually being kind of generous sometimes. Um, there's a lot of stuff missing here. Our goal is to try to improve this. And what I'm going to do is I want to be able to try to keep track of the changes that I've made to the code as I go through it. Here to team and go to, I'm gonna initialize a repository right here in this folder. So um, I'm not gonna to try to share this, like this code doesn't belong anywhere off of my computer. Um, but I wanna use the local repository as kind of a, a take snapshots as I go. And that way, if I need to go back or compare versions, um, I can do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I want to do an add to add this file to the uh, list of changes, and then I'm going to do a, a git commit. And this is my initial check in. Again, this commit is just committing to my local git repository. I'm not. The first thing I notice um, about this program is that we um, don't have any attempt at documenting what's going on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add some comments and that better describe what we expect to happen. And then we can talk about why it's not working. All I've done, I haven't changed any of the code. So all of the bugs are still there. All I've done is go through and, and done some cleanup. Um, I've added some comments describing what this architecture and, and board that I expect it to work on. Um, I documented what it's supposed to do. Um, I documented um, each of the functions, in this case, there's only one. And I went through and um, added code documentation just to kind of explain what we think is supposed to be happening. Now, there's a lot of room for improvement here. Um, there's a lot of code that looks norm like normal C code, and then there's a lot of code that would only make sense in a PIC32 and probably specifically only on this board. So my argument is that I think we need to improve that. Before I start making any more changes though, what I wanna do is I wanna check in this change. So I'm gonna go back here to team and commit, and we see that um, this file main.c is modified. Um, and I'm gonna put the checkbox here to make sure that it is included in the, the check-in and the commit. And then we're going to say added documentation. All right, and then we'll commit that. So I think as we go through here, we can kind of fix things up. Um, the first thing I want to do is to um, make functions for some of these things. Like there's some logical grouping to what's going on. Like there's early initialization of the hardware. Um, and then in here, we're detecting whether the button is pressed and then we're waiting for the button to be released and we're displaying the count. I think those are all logical actions. And so one of the nice things we can do is just create some functions that carry that logic. And let's see if it makes things a little bit more readable at least. And then maybe we can see if we can find some bugs.
Okay, so the code is done. Um, as you can see, I've pulled out the functions that we kind of identified. I didn't change what they do or how they're implemented. All I did was just pull them out. So there's an initialization function. Here's a display function. Um, and what we can do is add some comments now. And you'll notice if I do the slash star star, it comes up and it shows me the at param. These are all part of the um, Doxygen style comments. This is a tool that you can run on a C project and it'll generate PDF or HTML output, um, as well as other tools um, of the documentation that you write about your code. So um, the display function here um, will show the value on the user LED. And then this is the value to be displayed zero through 255. can do a quick build, make sure that the code builds. It does um, If I run it, it's not going to do anything different than it did before just because it's really the same program. So what we'll do is we'll do the same thing we've done before. We'll commit this change. Um, and we call this a um, top-down design. So top-down design. So we're just trying to improve the structure of the code and then we can kind of go from there. So I've made this uh, basis cheat sheet and um, if I look at the button configuration, I see that the, the center button doesn't have any conflicts. So I don't think that's causing our, our problem that we were seeing. And in fact, we're seeing the buttons work. So let's take a look here at the um, user LEDs. And those lowest two significant LEDs, those are multiplexed. And they're multiplexed with um, this TMS and TCK and the upper bit, upper two bits, three bits are all multiplexed with these TDIs and TDOs. These are all part of the JTAG device. And so what this tells me is that the uh, PIC microcontroller has JTAG turned on and our LEDs um, are being driven by that rather than by our GPIO. So that reminds me that I don't see any configuration directives. If I go back to our code, there is no configuration directives up here at all. And so on my cheat sheet, I can just go here and copy this default configuration. Um, and this is a really common mistake. Um, if you don't include the, this configuration, um, the, the device might work, but it's going to give you some unpredictable results. Now, as I look through here, I just want to make sure, since we know that JTAG is a problem, let's go ahead and turn JTAG off. We'll just turn that to be off and we'll go ahead and um, build and uh, reload this program. Um, I'll be honest with you, the, the way that this code is all set up um, isn't really all that great. Yeah, it works. And a lot of times, you know, students get to this point and they're, they're, they're pleased with themselves, they pat themselves on the back and then they're all done. Um, even something as simple as this can really be improved. So we did some top-down design and we were able to pull out some of the structure of the program, but we still have functionality kind of mixed and matched. We have functionality here for the button and we have functionality for the LEDs, all kind of in the same C file. And that's your first kind of example of things aren't right. So the first thing I wanna do is um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new C file and I'm going to call this button. And in our button, ah, I did the wrong one. Um, and so in our button handler, I want to this is exactly the same functionality that we had over in main. 
Um, so let's start there. Um, and so here's our in press code. And if I go back to main, I can grab our wait release and move it over here. And I can even grab, this was part of the initialization. Right, so um, the problem is if I were to try to compile this code, I'll get all kinds of warnings um, out of the system because the code in main can't automatically see the code in button.c. The C compiler compiles each file independently. So if I'm gonna do this, I also need to have a header file. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this code. I'm gonna make a new header file. We're gonna call it button.h. And since all three of these functions need to be visible in the both programs, both button.c and main.c need to see these, I'm just gonna declare them, but not define them. So the declaration of these functions will be here. And so both main and button.c can see the declaration of these three functions, but only button.c contains the definition of these functions. Now what I've got to do is come over here and I'm going to pound include button.h and I'm going to do the same thing in button.c. But button.c also is going to need the, the pick 32. So now that I have this, what we can do is we have to go back to main and actually use it. So over here where I was calling the button initialize, I now want to call button initialize. But everything else is now just the same. So we've, we've, we've kind of refactored out um, the button logic. So if there's any question about buttons, I'm going to go here to the button.c. If there's any question about main logic or display functions, I'm going to do everything in main. That doesn't, that's not right. we got to do the same thing with the, dis the LED display. Okay, so those two functions stay the same. Um, here in main now, we're gonna call LED initialize. Um, of course, we have the same problem that we had before with button. We need to have a .h file that declares these so that I can see it. Over here in main then, I need to pound include leds.h and fix a typo. And now everything else stays the same. So I can go and, and rebuild my program. And sure enough, everything compiled, everything is fine. Um, and if I run the code, um, it, it will work. So at this point, we've made things better. Um, the question is, can we make it even better? More better, better or rarer? Um, and I think the answer is yes. But first, we want to do the same thing we've done before. We want to commit this change. Okay, so we've managed to get the code to this state, but there's a lot of really specific machine dependency things going on here. And I really think we can do better. So let's take a look at um, the button driver. And the first thing that I see here in the button driver is 
that this code depends exactly on this configuration of Trisbits. If I were to pull this onto a different board, then all of this changes. Um, and, and that's not quite what we want. So one of the things we can try to do is to pull all of the board specific references out of this code and into a common header file that I can include. So our first attempt at doing that is going to be to define another header file and we're going to call this config.h. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll through all of our C files and anytime I see something that is machine specific like this, um, I'm going to pull it out of here and turn it into a pound defined over here. And so this was button. Now what I can do is go back to this code and instead of using this terrible RF stuff, I can come in here and say button center tris is equal to one. And down here I can say button center and down here button center. Now, it feels like we've made this less obvious as to what's going on. Um, I have to look over here in another file just to see what's happening. But the advantage to this is I have the, the button center defined in a board specific config file. And the two places that I'm using button center are now using the same symbol. Um, remember, this is a pound defined. So the C compiler, the C preprocessor is going to replace this string with whatever I have in its definition. And so we're using the symbol button center, um, but the C compiler is really going to see port f bits dot rf zero. Um, and so the C compiler is going to keep everything consistent for me. We can do the same thing over here in LEDs. Um, I would argue, though, that we're assuming here that the eight LEDs are consecutive, and that may not be true on all boards. In other words, were you assuming here that the lowest eight bits of Tris A is the eight LEDs, but on some other board, it might not be. Some other board that could be mapped to other pins. So if that's the case, what we probably need to do is Okay, so here in our configuration, I have the eight bits and um, we can now go over and re-implement all of this initialization code. So there's our display function. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, there's one other thing that I like to be able to do, and that's often to have an LED test or whatever, um, like a test function. So I can call this LED test, and this should turn on one LED at a time just to make sure that all the LEDs are working. Well, there you have it. So uh, we went from really, really simple, poorly written code that kind of worked to much better code, I think. Um, it's well-structured. It's 
well documented. It has the ability to uh, survive changes, so it's not as fragile as the other code was. We've hidden the system dependencies so that we can use this code on a variety of different boards. Um, we added some test code to be able to exercise various parts of the system so we can more easily debug hardware and software errors. Um, thanks for watching.